Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going over how to make your vehicle last a really long time with just some simple checks that everyone can do at home by themselves, whether they have in-depth car knowledge or not. I like to do these checks every six months or so, usually around the time when I change my summer tires out to winter tires. And we're gonna be going underneath the hood, we're gonna be doing the exterior of the vehicle, and we're gonna be jumping into the interior of the vehicle. First off though, we're gonna be jumping underneath the hood, so let's jump into that now. So underneath our hood is going to be the backbone of our vehicle. If everything's running properly underneath the hood, we're generally gonna have no issues out on the road. There's a few major components that we're gonna to wanna to be checking, our fluids, our belts and hoses, our battery, and our air filter. But first we're gonna be going over our fluids and making sure that everything is as it should. So first we wanna find our dipstick, which is right here on this vehicle. And if you guys haven't ever checked your oil, it's really simple and there's gonna be different types of dipsticks on every single vehicle. But go ahead and clean that with a paper towel first. And we're gonna put it back in, wait a second and pull it back out. And then we're gonna be checking our level. You see two lines there. You want it to be above the bottom line and below the top line. We also wanna be checking the color to make sure that the color isn't super dark black. And you can also give it a bit of a smell. And if it smells burnt, you're also gonna have issues with that. Our oil was between the two lines and adequate color and it doesn't smell burnt or anything. So everything is good with our oil. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to check is our coolant level. There's gonna be a bunch of different vehicles and different systems for your coolant, but this one has an external reservoir. And for this one, you just wanna make sure that it's at or above that line there. I am on a bit of a slope but I am at that line, so I am all good. And the coolant still looks like it's a good color, so I'm good at, for the coolant. So the next one's gonna be our brake fluid. For this, we're just gonna make sure it's at its proper level and it does look like a decent color. So if we look in there, we're gonna see that it's above the minimum line and, and below the maximum line, and the color looks decent, so we're all good with our brake fluid. And the last fluid that we're gonna check is to make sure our washer fluid is completely topped up. And if we look in there, I just topped it up, so we are good with our washer fluid. This vehicle has electric power steering, so I'm not gonna have the hydraulic fluid that's in there for the power steering. But if you do have that reservoir, make sure to go ahead and check that as well. So next thing we wanna do is go ahead and look over all of our belts and our hoses, just to make sure that everything is nice and firm. There's no cracks, there's no abrasions, they're seeing no cuts on any of the hoses, and that there's no leaks or obvious signs of leakage uh, in your engine bay. You also wanna go ahead and check your belt, make sure it's proper tension, you don't see any cracking, you don't see any cuts, and you don't see any wear on that belt as well. For this vehicle, everything's looking good, so I know that my belts and my hoses are working as they should. Now let's go ahead and check our engine intake air filter. So for this one, I do have a cold air intake system. Uh, I do have a video on how I installed this, but for most systems, you're gonna have to open up a box and you're gonna find your air filter inside of it. But for me, I'm just, I can actually physically see that air filter. I can see that it's good. This one also how you have to oil and this one is oiled properly, doesn't look dirty. I just did this recently. So I know that this air filter is clean and is working as it should. So I don't need to change anything there. And last but not least, we're going to be checking our battery. This one specifically is under a cover, uh, but we're gonna be checking our battery terminals to make sure that they're nice and tight and secure. We're not gonna have any issues with them coming off and that we don't see any corrosion building up on that battery. So we know that everything is working as it should and we shouldn't have any issues while we're out there on the road. So we went ahead and checked everything underneath the hood. Uh, let's go ahead and start up the engine, make sure that we're not hearing any clunking or clicking or anything that you don't wanna hear from an engine. So we'll start it up, we'll go underneath the hood, make sure everything sounds okay. So from what I can hear, I can't hear anything abnormal. I don't hear any weird clicking. The belt looks like it's working as it should. Everything sounds really good, I'm happy with it. So that's it for under the hood, guys. Everything is looking really good underneath the hood, really happy with it. So let's go ahead and check our exterior. And firstly, we're gonna be checking our tires to make sure that everything is good. So there's a few things we want to check when it comes to our tires. We want to make sure that we have adequate tread depth and I'll show you how to check that in a moment. We also want to make sure that our tires are wearing evenly. Uh, we also want to check to make sure that we have no cuts, cracks or abrasions on the sidewall that could be dangerous while we're driving. And we also want to check the tire pressure to make sure that it's pressured properly and that all the tires are even. Make sure that you are running on the road smoothly. Also when it comes to your tire, you want to make sure that your lug nuts are all nice and tight 
Uh, we're not gonna go ahead and actually torque them down to spec at this point. You should be doing that when you are changing your tires uh, from summers to winters, but it's a good idea to make sure that these lug nuts are tight on there and nothing's loose, because if there was a loose lug nut, that could mean that you have uh, issues with your tire and your tire could potentially fall off while you're driving. So just make sure those are tight when you're checking this as well. So in checking to see if you have adequate tread depth, you do have all of these little lines in your tire grooves, and that's gonna indicate exactly where the bottom level of the tread depth should be when, uh, when using your tire. So if it does reach that level of those lines, you do wanna go ahead and change your tires out. So in order to check your tire pressure, go ahead and remove the valve stem cap. I like to put it on top of the tire so I don't forget where it is. And there's a bunch of different systems. I just have a manual gauge, so I'm gonna go ahead and push that on and it's gonna pop out the PSI. And if you look at that, I'm looking at about 33-ish PSI. So I'll go ahead and remember that number and I'll go into the driver's side door where it's actually gonna show me the exact PSI that this vehicle is rated for. But I believe that's right within spec, so I'm happy with the PSI and the tire pressure for these. So at this point I have the truck jacked up. I am using a floor jack, but you can just as easily use the spare tire jack that comes with your vehicle. Um, this step is definitely overlooked by a lot of vehicle owners and checking the front end to make sure that all the components are working as they should. Um, all we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be grabbing either side of the tire and giving it a bit of a twist. The movement that you're seeing here is pretty normal. That's just the front end with the, for the steering wheel. But if you are hearing a bit of a clicking noise or some like bumping, then you do have um, an issue with the front end there. And then if you grab the front at the top and the bottom and give it a shake as well, that'll also indicate different components of your vehicle are wearing out in the front end. And you definitely wanna go in the back, see what's going on, and you can start to diagnose that problem as well. So I went ahead and took the tire off. Um, this is just gonna give you a way easier look um, on the inside to actually see what's going on. You don't necessarily have to do that though. You can just turn the tire uh, one full way to check one side of everything and then you can turn it the other way to check in the other side. But just for ease, I took off the tire. What we're gonna do is we're gonna check the suspension, make sure that everything is intact in place and you're not seeing any damage to the springs, you're not seeing any damage to the piston itself. And you're not gonna see any leaks or anything. Um, everything's looking good with this shock. And you're also gonna wanna check your rotor and your brake pads, make sure everything is nice and smooth. Uh, you're not seeing any warping. If you have uh, been having issues with your brakes, you're probably gonna wanna definitely look over it in depth. But you're also gonna wanna check your brake pad levels and make sure that those are adequate. If you get below about a millimeter of brake pad, you definitely wanna go ahead and change those out. There should be a wear indicator uh, this like little metal piece that'll actually start rubbing against your rotor. And if you are starting to hear that squeal, that's a good indication that your brake life is getting low and you do need to go ahead and change those out. So one thing I really like to do is I like to do a walk around in my vehicle to see if I am seeing any new damage, if I'm seeing anything that shouldn't be where it is. Um, something like I like to check would be the mud flaps to make sure that they're secure and that they're in place and they should be. So go ahead and walk around seeing, checking for any damage, check the mud flaps. This one could use a little tighten, which is good to know. You can see that bolt's coming out a little bit, so I'll have to tighten that up. Um, so that's something that, you know, it's good to check. Coming to the rear, underneath the vehicle now, and we're actually gonna check to make sure that the exhaust system's working. We don't have any leaks with the exhaust. So I'm underneath the vehicle. Checking to make sure that there's no exhaust leaks. I don't hear any weird sounds coming from anywhere else other than from the exhaust, which is perfect. And I'm not seeing anything obvious when it comes to exhaust leaks, which is perfect. I do see a lot of people driving around with exhaust leaks, so definitely something you wanna check. While doing the exterior of your vehicle, make sure to go around and make sure all the lights are functioning as they should. This truck is an awesome feature where I can actually cycle through all the lights myself and I don't need the help of a friend, but you can have a friend help you out, run through all the brake lights and all the turn signals for you um, while you walk around the vehicle. But just make sure that all of the lights are working, including the license plate lights, uh, while you're doing that exterior walk around. Continuing our 360 on the vehicle, checking the mud flaps, checking the tires, checking for any exterior damage. Not seeing anything, so the exterior is looking good. So now we have the exterior completely checked out, let's go ahead and check out the interior. So now that we're interior of the vehicle, let's go ahead and start it up. 
Main thing I'm gonna be looking for on the dash is any check engine lights. Uh, if we do have any check engine lights, I wanna go ahead and plug in an OBD2 reader and checking to see what those codes are and what I could be potentially fixing. I wanna check my seat belt. I wanna check to see if I have any new chips in the windshield. I do have one crack in the windshield that I know about. Just getting to know your vehicle and if there's anything different about it that you didn't know previously that you could potentially need to fix. Checking to make sure all the interior lights are working as they should and all the mirrors and windows are clear and not dirty and not cracked as well. So this whole process is really just about getting personal with your vehicle. Too many times do I see people leaving it to mechanics or other people to fix their problems for them. And I think a lot of this stuff is really straightforward that you can go ahead and do yourself and it's gonna stop a lot of the major issues that you see with your vehicle on a regular basis. Uh, if you guys like this video, you're probably gonna like some of the videos that are on the screen right now. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. Until next time guys, take care.